basically talk a lot of shit, act like I know a lot about football, but I don't. I just manipulate children for views, really. <laughs> seeing, like, even like seeing you today, it's sort of weird because mm. like, we've been on Skype heaps. You're taller than I expected. You're taller than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I was a huge fan. Uh, okay, McDonald's damn boy. Were you? Hey, yeah. Like, the Eagles are just look very cooked right now. And... I was looking at it is strange because round one they look pretty good. I think you've got a good balance. Like you actually surprise me sometimes. You go like, "What's up, plonkers? These nuts?" No, you don't say that. I was going to uni and yeah, just playing FIFA, and I was like, well, "This is shit." Like, <laughs> like I want. Fuck! I wish I'd been there like that at that age. Yeah. <laughs> I did not have that realization. Yeah. <laughs> want to follow Man United around Europe and travel. Wow. So like while doing that, but do Man United content instead of AFL content. You like, strike me as a real Mark Goldbridge type. <laughs> Mark Goldbridge. <laughs> <laughs> It's good having a 19 year on the podcast because now I've got someone who's at my same mental age. <laughs> yeah, Shui embodies what it is to be an Eagles player, I think. Exactly, <laughs> but I mean it in a good way. Yeah, see, in, in your way, it's perfect, but in yeah. the opposite. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Like, mm. he's got the, like, the, the swagger, the arrogance, the, and like, it's so professional as well. So I'm, I just like strolled in, like, do a rub down or two, strap an ankle, like, run water. And then they eventually gave you a job. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, welcome to True Footy Podcast 56. This may be one of the wettest podcasts we've ever experienced, and not least because of the rain, but also because young Druzy is joining us. <laughs> You're a freak. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, thanks for having me on. No worries, it's been man. A long time coming. It has yeah. been a long time. Yeah, exactly, man. We're um like we we we've said this like off air before, but you know, there's a lot of, there's been a big explosion of like collaborations in like AFL and YouTube this year or in the last maybe six months. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but it's rare that like, I think you might be the first or second person I've met in person that has a YouTube channel. I think mm. Christian was the other one yeah. we had on the channel. And this, that was before he had a channel, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So um, you and I are about as local as it gets, but it, <laughs> how far away do you live? Oh, uh, yeah, like 40 minutes south. So it's still a bit of a trek, but it's worth it. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> these are the challenges that us Perth influencers, no, these Perth um, <laughs> AFL YouTubers um, face because like I did, I literally did, a, I was saying it before as well, I did a... Um, video with a guy in Rockingham the other day and that's 40 minutes away and between you and him you guys are the closest people yeah. to me but uh as a long-winded way of saying thank you for coming on it's, <laughs> it's been a it's been a, like a hot minute thank um, you for making the journey yes yeah <laughs> the perilous journey seriously that's quite <laughs> a commute is dead. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of shit happens in here <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely cool man so i um you know i've been uh, a fan of yours for a long time you uh, make some great content but the way i want to start this pod is i'll give you a chance to describe what it is that you do on your channel um uh, to people who might not have heard of you before basically talk a lot of shit um act like i know a lot about football but i don't and uh just manipulate children for views really <laughs> <laughs> we have that in common <laughs> Especially uh, the last one. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've always wanted to do like like sports content and like being a big Fremantle fan. I thought, why not make AFL content? Go to the games every every second week or so. So I started vlogging those, and they started doing all right. Then I started stealing some clout from Caden and Austin, and uh, <laughs> the numbers started increasing. So I thought, yeah, I'll stick to AFL content, and I just make uh, little quiz videos, just stupid videos, just taking the mic. Really, I don't know what I'm talking about eighty percent of the time. But, <laughs> no, it's good fun. No, that's cool, man. Uh, yeah, you, like, you're like everyone else I've had on this show so far. You just undersell what you do quite a lot, um, <laughs> which I get. But um, when was it, when did you actually start uploading? Like, when, What was the, uh, the moment that you were like, I'm actually going to put this on YouTube and, what, and why? Well, I, had a, I think everyone's had an a older channel when they were younger. Mm, mm. When I was like 12, I uploaded videos like running around the bush around my house just doing dumb shit. But um, the Druzy channel, my first video I uploaded was February 2019. Okay. Um, and it was a UFC 234 vlog. I was in <laughs> Melbourne and I just vlogged my weekend. Um, and I messaged Caden. I was like, can you check out my video that I did? Because when I was in Melbourne. Um, and then, yeah, from there it just sort of took off and I started following those boys pretty much. Oh, that's cool. Do you... um, were you, So you... Were you, f like, watching them before? Yeah. 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 I was a huge fan. Uh, Caden McDonald damn boy. Were you? Hey, yeah, like, I remember he replied to my DM. I was like, I'm going to Melbourne. Like, are you going to this festival that I was going to go to? And he was like, oh, no, nah, mate. And I was like, fuck, you reply. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give me a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a shout out. And he has. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think the way I found your channel was I couldn't actually pinpoint the moment 
you did a like a video with them, I remember. But I think before that, they were like they just started talking to you, yeah, um, about you in like, like in a no meet on the Cleats podcast yeah. as well. Um, what was that like when you went to Melbourne and recorded with them? Was that surreal for someone who was yeah. like a bit of a fan of them before? Um, well, by the time I like I I was talking to them quite a lot by then, so mm. I'd like yeah the fanboy barrier had come down, so to say. But um, <laughs> it was still sick, like pretty weird seeing like even like seeing you today is sort of weird because mm. like we've been on Skype heaps. You're taller than I expected. You're taller than I expected. <laughs> 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 There's a bunch of taller boys. Yeah, there you go. How um, tall are you? Uh, oh, Pushing five ten, I reckon. Oh, really? I thought you were like right now. I thought you looked like about six foot. Yeah, I got I got some uh, the force ones. Yeah, the, the big soles oh, okay. forces. Give yeah, me some nice. inches. Yeah, and it's height wise. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, meeting Caden and Cookson was sick. Um, I went to the UFC with Cookson the next day as well, yeah, so right. I got to spend like a couple of days with Cookson, and I only saw Caden that one day. But yeah, it was a sick experience. Yeah. Um, and they sort of made me realise to, to wing it and just go with it is the way to go instead of being all professional and setty uppy. Because yeah. it was such a mess of a day, but it worked out perfect. <laughs> so, like, just go on with it, yeah. That's cool, yeah. That's yeah, i got to admit, I thought you were from Melbourne when I first... Because I yeah. first saw you through those guys, I'm like, you must be one of their mates from Melbourne yeah. or whatever, getting around it, yeah. doing some good stuff. Yeah, no, I was sick to film with them. Because, obviously, yeah, yeah, watching them for years was a pretty pretty weird moment. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a great time. We got along great and, yeah, had good fans. No, nah, they're really good fellas, aren't they? Yeah. I think the first time we actually spoke was in that um, massive Skype call for that uh, for Kuko's quiz. True. Are we openly talking about that quiz? Because yeah. he, he hasn't uploaded it yet. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a month ago. Three years ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've alluded to quizzes we still haven't uploaded. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, you still need to send me. Oh, yeah, i got to send you. That's my I, bad. I yeah. have a really bad track record in quizzes, yeah. um, <laughs> which makes me really nervous for the Know Your Club that, uh, we're, that about, we're about yeah. to do later on because I, my, I tend to go to water under lights. Um, <laughs> quite literally um, <laughs> Bit like West Coast this year Alright, we'll get to that We'll get to that <laughs> <laughs> Got it Got it, yeah. um, oh, How good is it? <laughs> yeah. As a fair It's just like Oh, at least they're doing shit too Yeah, we were expected to yeah. do pretty shit though So yeah. for them to be doing shit As premiership <laughs> contenders it's Yeah like, yeah, yeah, it's that's nice. good. I'm, I'm glad that's, that you're happy about that. <laughs> so right. They'll probably set up an Optus Assault once they get back here. Yeah, I doubt it. Really? Yeah. Why? I I just don't think... Um, well, actually, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> hence this uh, podcast. No, um, I don't know. Look, I the Eagles will just look very cooked right now. And it's I was looking strange. at... It is strange. Because round one, they look pretty good. Mm. And I don't really have any explanation for why... They've gone to shit. I remember because obviously we played. It all started in round two when we lost to the Gold Coast, and yeah, I was like, "Lose to the Gold Coast? That'd be so embarrassing." <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of team loses to Gold Coast? <laughs> exactly, but at least oh, two years in a row. <laughs> in <that> case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you guys didn't get pants like we did, and I think that was the big shock. But I think I put it down to a Gold Coast aren't that bad, and I think evidently they're not. Uh, but secondly, um, the conditions, and we are terrible, you know, in dewy conditions. And I, I know it's an excuse, but... Yes, when you we, are terrible against Stuart Dew. Yeah, yeah, it didn't help that he was the coach. Um, but the next week against Brisbane, we were, you know, it was the same thing. And that was, I expected that result because Brisbane are a good side. So that's different. The, the Port game is really what threw me because good conditions, Port Adelaide, you know, they're all right. Um, sorry, Anthony, but they're not, they're not necessarily like, you know, I know they're 4-0. But that was a very winnable game on neutral ground. To in fine conditions, we should have played a lot better than we have. So, I think we'll get done by Sydney this week. Nah. You don't reckon? Surely not. We'll see, the Eagles are going to have to bounce back at some point. Yeah. And well, we said that about Melbourne, didn't we? Where was this? Where is the Sydney game again? SC is it? Uh, Metricon. Okay, it's at yeah. Metricon. Yeah. Mm. I was just saying, for SCG, you'd probably be screwed. Yeah. I'm sick of Metricon now. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Of fuck it. Now. Yeah. <laughs> not been a good, good place for the Dockers in recent memory. So. Uh, yeah, true. Actually, to be fair with us as well, we lost, the, obviously, this re- uh, week. We drew in 2015 and we lost in 2017. And I don't think we've won since, like, 2014. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, the hub, we literally haven't won there. So, um, but, yeah, anyway, less about that depressing shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Moving on. Um, other than Caden Cookson, mm-hmm. who were the sort of YouTubers you really enjoyed watching um, and in 
inspired, I guess, what you do now? Um, at the time when I wanted to make a channel, it was at a time where I was just playing FIFA every day, like religiously, and I was like, man, this isn't good. Like, didn't have much going for me. I was like, I should probably put something into a project. And I was watching a lot of Football mm-hmm. Daily. They're a, um, really? like an English, uh, like digital media sort of company, and they make like football videos, English football videos mm-hmm. every day. Um, and one of the guys from that company has a podcast and he was like, if you want to make it into like the media industry, which I have always wanted to do, um, make a channel to start making content. And then if you want to work for like a digital media company, like that's your portfolio, yeah. just, just the channel. So I was like, even if I don't get views, I'm like I can improve my editing, like make a project and yeah. So that's how it started. So like, uh, yeah, football daily, all the boys on there, probably the main influences and like copper 90 as well. Yeah. Know yeah. You know them. Like, yeah. yeah, that was that was the main. I was gonna go like statistical, but then I was like, nah, I'm just gonna take the piss. Yeah, no, I think you've got a good balance. Like, you actually surprise me sometimes. You go like, what's up, plonkers? These nuts? No, you don't say that. But, but you know what I mean. Like, you, you go from that to then like quite good observations about footy. So like, I, I'm always thrown when I'm on your channel. It's good. Know your club is my favorite thing, by the way. Thank you. Um, but sorry, just getting back to that. So you actually had a time in your life where you're like, I'm playing too much FIFA. I'm not being productive, and you wanted to do something more constructive is yeah. that is that what you mean because you're quite young to have that realization <laughs> yeah well i was going to uni and yeah just playing fifa and i was like well this is shit like <laughs> like i want fuck i wish i'd been there like that at that age yeah. <laughs> i did not have that realization yeah. <laughs> but like just i want to from then on pretty much i've always wanted to see progression from like week to week or even okay. day to day so, yeah like looking back now before YouTube, I didn't, I wasn't making any progression other than just churning through uni work and playing FIFA. Mm. So yeah, started the channel and like you watch my older videos and they're so awkward, mm. but it's good to see <laughs> that like progression and that that's the key. You know? I actually think you're quite confident on camera naturally for someone that um, hasn't been doing it. I guess that long. I guess none of us have. But would you say would you describe yourself as a confident person? Uh, oh. I mean, I might come across as confident, but I'm yeah. definitely, yeah, internally no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Um, yeah. Yeah, not okay. Too, not too nervous, but yeah, there's always nerves there. Yeah. I just think I'm decent at handling them, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, um, you're at uni, mm-hmm. you alluded to. What do you study? Uh, exercise, sports, and rehabilitation. Sciences. Okay. What made you want to do that? Because you also mentioned just then you were interested in the media. So mm. what's what's the sort of thinking like with your future? Well, me- <laughs> media is always the top goal because that's just... Really? Like, yeah, getting cool. paid to follow sport. Like, yeah. That, that's just the dream. But um, I always enjoyed human bio in high school. Mm. Um, always enjoyed sport. Yeah. Human bio, sport... Mm. <laughs> there you go. Um, and I'm enjoying it. Like it's not like heinous work to do. Like I enjoy yep. the content that we learn. And okay. I can see myself doing going down that road if if YouTube and media doesn't work out. But mm. yeah, I'll you know. could even incorporate that into media. So like yeah. not having that knowledge in sports, it's like when a guy pulls a hammy or whatever, you could provide yeah. specific insight that perhaps the average media guy couldn't. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's a good point. Actually, yeah, you can talk about the construction of the hamstring. Yep. As Nat Fife hobbles off the field. <laughs> <laughs> and our season gets yep. suck. <laughs> <laughs> so now we need Tammy and shoulder surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that, that broke my heart, but nah, he should be back. I think he's meant to be. Only right. a couple of weeks, like, yeah. Only a few weeks, yeah. For the Derby, I think they'll say he'll be back. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all right. For the spoon bowl. The spoon bowl. Fuck off. <laughs> Assuming we lose this week to Adelaide. <laughs> Oh, you would. You surely won't. Oh, that'd be embarrassing. It yeah, would, that be. would be. Yeah. That would be bad. Nah, I feel like there's a big gap between Fremantle and Adelaide right now. Yeah. Like, I know they're second and last and last, but and even West Coast, I think, are still better than Adelaide. Yeah. Adelaide, Joe. like, remind me of 2017 for you. Like, really? Yeah, like, um, what was it, 2017 or 2018? Like, our last year at uh, Domain. Uh, yeah, like, just 17. In shambles, like, yeah. no good team camaraderie. Just, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All the rumours, everyone hates Fife. And Absolutely. All that yeah. stuff he got a captain. Around. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, fair enough. No, that's cool. Um, but yeah, no, that's quite interesting what you said about like make it, realising the connection between like what you want to do and then doing this like creative project on your own to sort of move towards that because that's something that I realised at about 24 years old that I wanted to do. <laughs> like I had no interest in YouTube. I found True Geordie Podcast and, I, and then I think Joyce was like, should we make a show where we talk about footy? And I was like, that's sick. Um, so that's kind of what I was, my logic was kind of doing with this as well. And like, I wanted to 
to build up the resume, maybe to, to transition into the, the industry or whatever. But then also there's the, the cool idea of like, it would be cool if True Footy becomes its own brand and that's the career. Do you know what I mean? Hell yeah. What, like, what is your ideal goal? Like, I know it's hard because you even I don't even know what mine looks like. Yeah. But do you have an idea of what, like, the best case scenario looks like? Best case scenario? Ooh. Well, I think AFL YouTube content that, like, myself, and I think even fair to say for, like, Caden and Cooks, it's pretty limited in terms of there's, like, a cap on it. Like, sure. subscribers, yeah. you're not going to get millions of subscribers from that. Yeah. So I want to rinse AFL YouTube for everything that I have, pretty much. <laughs> um, try and build myself up as much as I can. Say, a couple, give that, like, three or four years. And then by the time that's... Sort of, I've done everything I can. Move over to the UK um, and mm. travel in a, like in in Europe. Um, wanted to, want to follow Man United around Europe and travel. Wow. So like while doing that, but do Man United content instead of AFL content. So sort of apply my AFL formula to the Premier League, pretty much. Yeah, because yeah. Because there's always stuff happening in the Premier League as well, and I get to vlog Man United games. They get so many views. All those Man United vlogs as well. Yeah, I bet. Like, yeah. You might get like three thousand. Or whatever. You like, struck me as a real Mark Goldbridge type. Mark Goldbridge. <laughs> <laughs> Statman Dave. <laughs> Statman Dave. Fucking yeah. Um, but yeah, like, Caden, say, gets like 10,000 views for a match day vlog. Like, I think yeah, you true. get that easy for a Man United vlog. Because mm. there's so many people around the world that watch Man United. Yeah. When they were here. True, like, it's global, isn't it? Yeah. When they were here, I did two, two vlogs. I think one got like 2,000 and one got 4,000 views. And I had like 300 subs at that point. So if yeah. I can have all the subs from AFL um, YouTube and then transfer that to the Premier League and then vlog that, like maybe that could be something. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Would you see it um, as more like keeping up your sort of bantery kind of format yeah. or were you not so much like the nerdy analytical yeah, no, or a bit I'm, of both? I'm or go analytical. I yeah, think okay. I, <laughs> They even do it like a play on being Australian Man United fan. I don't yeah. Know, like, be myself yeah. still, obviously. True. Don't I think like, that's important. Yeah. That'd no. help you stand out. Yeah. Yeah, because it is competitive, right? Yeah. So if, you, if you're positioning yourself as like a expert, and that's something yeah. I've tried to move away from this with this, because, <laughs> um, yeah, you're just setting yourself up to fail. But also, <laughs> like, with Man United, you are competing against a Mark Goldbridge and a, yeah. and a thing. So if you want, like, really good analytical content, you're going to go to the, the big channels, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I wouldn't be saying fair to income, good day, bloody kangaroo Oof. every third word, but yeah. like if I could market it, kangaroo. Like that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Australian, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, um, we do say that. Good day, cobbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking hell, that was a fucking cracking shot. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, no, I'd be myself, but mm. um, yeah, that that's where I think I'll end up heading. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully from that, get a job at a digital media company presenting or. Something like that. Cool. Yeah, right. That's so good. you're quite ambitious for a 19 year old. Like, <laughs> like I said, at 19, I hadn't figured my life out. What were you doing at 19, Bush? Getting pissed at Metro's Freo every week. <laughs> yes, yes, I can <laughs> confirm that's exactly what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there to do? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing really. The Holy Grail. Metro's the big is house. Underrated. It absolutely the big. It house. gets a bad rap. But are you a Metro's boy? I don't go clubbing much, eh? Don't you? <laughs> no, I wasn't sure. Most cause... Saturday nights I find myself editing. <laughs> yeah. See, that's interesting to me. Like, for your age. Like, I love that because yeah. I'm, I'm exactly the same, but I'm 26 and I've got to fucking move on with my life. <laughs> like, and I, you've I gone hard for a few years and the novelty's worn off of yeah. going hard. <laughs> that Viagra really did kick in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's good having a 19 year old on the podcast because now I've got someone who's at my same mental age. <laughs> um, even in the like the YouTube group chat that we have, like every time I cop a D, like a drop a D's nuts joke, I get a like from Druzy and <laughs> maybe backyard Charizard. <laughs> he gets it, but like no, everyone else is like, geez. The 38 year old, 26 year old, and 19 year old all have 19 year old minds. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking oath. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. Where were we at? Oh yeah. Um, Metro's Rio. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. the real topics. Um, Man United. So you're from the UK, aren't you? Yeah. Or oh, what do you consider that. yourself? Yeah. Uh, I was born here. I've been raised here. Yeah. But I don't know. I've, I do feel like a, a fish out. Of, oh, that's not the right saying. I don't feel like I'm truly at home in Australia. Sort of. Well, fish out of water was the right saying then. Was it? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. I'm a fish out of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, really? That's really interesting. And you're born here. Yeah. Um, interesting. I don't know. I've always clicked more with English culture, okay. like um, English YouTube and stuff yeah. like that. And I realized like this is the banter that I like. Yeah. Um, and like the Premier League, I love the passion of it. I love the yeah. fans. I love the culture. Um, 
and sort of the opposite for like Australian football culture. Not too mm. huge on like the the demographic. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, I just I've always felt more tied to that. And when I've gone back to England, like it feels strange, but I, I, I do feel like I'm at home there. As really? cringe as it sounds, like oh, okay, it's interesting. I just do feel yeah. At home there. Wow, yeah. that, that is interesting for me. Just because you like you haven't lived there, and I suppose you've always felt the connection to there. I kind of know what you mean. I'm not English at all, mm. but there is something amazing about going to the UK. I spent 11 days there in London. Mm. Uh, oh, I went to Liverpool and Manchester as well. But I to Liverpool. Oh, I just wanted to be like a tip in Liverpool. Down the road. <laughs> <laughs> we we tell you what, we had a big night in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was good. But um, yeah, no, I was just gonna say, I think there's just something about the UK for me, like. I don't know. It's, I could happily live there. Yeah, it's yeah. such like a genuine, hearty... Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's something about it. Um, it's interesting what you say about the culture, though, because I've often thought that... Um, and I guess the AFL is no different, but the the Premier League supporting culture is fucking, like, piggish as fuck, <laughs> to yeah. use my own term. But, like, in terms of, you know, Liverpool's, um, Liverpool's won the league, but, like, we're still copping shit. Or, like... You know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, very toxic. Yeah. And I suppose you get that a little bit in AFL, but I don't know. Get it uh, in every sport, really, to an extent. Yeah. There's going to be an element of it. No one cares about you, so yeah. you want to slip <laughs> under the radar of hatred. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there does seem like a genuine hatred between those clubs. I oh, guess that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Yeah, like, 100%. Like in the AFL, it's a bit, like, more bantery between Eagles and Fremantle. Like, obviously, there is. it's a, kind of a hatred, but it's also, like... Okay we can get passes but sometimes yeah. like the way you read on social media the way Premier League fans talk to each other it's like it's, holy shit they're so passionate over there like it yeah. is genuinely their life like mm. the only thing that's most people that follow it look forward to travel up and down True. the country with their mates yeah. every weekend getting pissed like late goals and that just there's so much emotion in it True. it is like a drug my, um, my uncle is. was an Arsenal hooligan um, oh really yeah back in the day <laughs> um, when like Thierry Henry and that I don't know if you familiar with your, your footballers but yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. it was yeah. his life like yeah years, okay years. so that's definitely it. something i can see myself falling for <laughs> is that are you, so you're more premier league and man united than you are Fremantle? It's a oh, tough question because yeah. bush bush is like you're nuanced aren't you like between basketball what would you say you are between golden state dockers and i'd rather dockers win a flag than golden state and the perth wildcats win five age but you yeah. do prefer basketball as a sport basketball is more the sport that i know and understand that i've played and okay. stuff yeah, yeah. yeah okay but in terms of a team that I passionately support, Stock is the most by mile. Yeah, I'd definitely say, yeah, Frio Premiership. But if you're comparing like a, a Champions League to a Frio Premiership, it'd be really close. Yeah, I'd okay. probably lean towards a Frio Premiership. But yeah. Like, I guess because you've never seen one, whereas Man United, the value in them winning the Premier League to you might be a bit lower because you can yeah. watch how many titles they won. Well, <laughs> like, I started following it. Like, my dad was a United fan. Mm. Um, but like, I never sort of caught on to it until I was about... 13, 14, I was like, this is sick, like, I want to follow this, so I yeah. popped on, like, my dad was supporting United, Yeah. Um. but where was I going with that? Oh, I never saw United win the league or okay. the Champions League, I've seen them win the FA Cup and the Europa League, but never, like, a Premier League. So, yeah, like, so you missed out on that super stacked team. With, like, because um, yeah, like, I don't know shit about soccer, but I know when I was a little kid, like, Man U was, like, the yeah. team. Like, like that's Leonardo's all I knew. Yeah. And Rooney, yeah. Pears, yeah. Mm. He's done all that. So wow. once, once yeah. Moyes come in and it started this, like, the ship started to, yeah. sort of to sink, that's when I hopped on. But, um, Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go free or premiership. So you being a Man United and Fremantle fan, and I'm being a West Coast and Liverpool fan, we really are just more <laughs> <laughs> We really are. Yeah. But it's, it's a good time to be a Liverpool fan, though. Yeah, well... Was that painful for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, shocking Fair to enough. Say, I suppose it would be like if, for me, if Fremantle won one, because, like, at the moment... Well, Liverpool were a meme because they hadn't won one. Yeah. And, um, you know, Slippy G and all that shit. And Fremantle remain that kind of way until they win yeah. one. That would be very hard for me to see, I think. Yeah, well... <laughs> we probably don't quite have the history that Liverpool do, but... Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably just get a pity clap when we get one. Like, <laughs> there we go. So you're on the spectrum of like really I'm on the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you guessed my question. Um, no, nah, like on the on the scale of like passionateness, I think passion is what I was yeah. looking for. Passion, yeah. Um, how passionate are you as a Fremantle fan? Oh. Because you're quite bantery, almost like you don't take it too seriously. But like, for instance, how much does it affect you if they? Win or lose. Oh yeah, a fair fair amount. I've, I'm more uh, equipped at 
losing now sort of thing. Like, yeah. I'm, 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 I know what you The mean. losses are a water off a duck's back to a Dockers fan at this yeah, point, but the yeah. wins are just hit you different. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. But they definitely, like... Like, it pisses me off a lot when yeah, we lose. And yeah. I, I love it when we win. Like, it obviously yeah. makes your day when we win. Um, So out of 10, I'd give it, like, a solid 9.3. Inches? Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely the most lowbrow podcast we've ever done with a guest. <laughs> I know, some of our early ones were pretty yeah, lowbrow. Yeah. No, you're right, you're Those right. Those are the best ones. So. Yeah. Bloody earth. Um, I know what you mean. I... I'm, I realise how spoiled I am as an Eagles fan like recently because I'm a, I've become a fucking filthy loser. Like these losses, the, these three in a row, I've like ruined my day. Whereas <laughs> that, it's just all about um, your expectations. So if, yeah. when you're an Eagles fan right now, we're going to Understandably for a play. got good expectations. Yeah, and you can probably, as a premiership contender, this is what I believe we were, you can probably lose four or five games a year and we've already lost three in a row. So like that seems like almost the end of the world but like obviously when your team's sort of low on the ladder you kind of enjoy the wins a bit more i think that's what i would say so if we beat with sydney this week by 10 points i'd probably be like yeah Yeah. cool all right yeah pity we lost those those three before (laughs) but like i think maybe when you're a Fremantle fan and i've been a fan of an eagle side that's like been low on the ladder (laughs) like now um (laughs) then like you do definitely get a little bit more joy from, from the win you enjoy the process yeah. yeah and it makes you appreciate it when you're winning as well like when Dockers were having their like mm. success in like 2013 to 2015 I True. Just, I definitely took it for granted I wasn't yeah, trying okay. so, yeah okay yeah that's like, interesting now it's like man like if we were like smashing teams and playing good like mm. I would be appreciating it but yeah you know what I've I don't know if it was born out of that period for Fremantle, but I know so many Fremantle fans your age, and I guess kind of your age, I, like our age yeah. younger. When I was younger, like I felt like it was more West Coast dominated. But yeah. I wonder if that period really sparked, like, I think it was more like an indie team to go for. The Eagles are like, you know what I mean? Like the right-wing Nazi <laughs> team. No, nah. no, but it's true though. I've, I was going to bring up your theory that you've brought up a cup off camera a couple of times, the fact that the Eagles sold out their memberships, like heaps of people wanted to be able to go mm. to games and stuff as kids. So, yeah. the, so that younger factor might be yeah. kids that could have the opportunity to be Dockers members and true. get around the team. Very true. And then there's the geographic side of it yeah. where we live south of the river. And the a lot of Fremantle free people like... I say I'm from Fremantle, not from Perth. Like, I resonate as yeah. a Freo person, not yeah. a Perth person. Yeah, from here. Like, five, ten minutes that true. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, no, I just, I've noticed, like, when I saw that you were a Fremantle fan, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. He seems like a Fremantle fan, <laughs> you know what I mean? Working, <laughs> yeah. <nerdy virgin>. Loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I genuinely meant, I just, I don't know why. I think even just going to Curtin, the amount of Fremantle fans were there. It's mm. weird. I wonder mm. if other unis have a different demographic. But anyway, I reckon UW would have a lot of Eagles fans. So that's yeah, just a so stab in the dark, but that's, that's weird. That's something I, when I got older, I, like when I moved back to Australia because I lived overseas, um, that was something I noticed. That yeah. There are actually, maybe not demographic, but certainly geographic. Oh, I guess demographic hmm. variances in Eagles fans. I never yeah. thought that. So well, well, not, at school, it's pretty fifty-fifty. Hey? Was it? Like, okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. My age, anyway. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, the, maybe a little bit more Eagles, but it wasn't like I was like a Lone Ranger. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. Like, there okay. was definitely fair fans about. Yeah, well, when we went to uni, um, yeah. Bush and I were friends, obviously, Joycey. Uh, that whole friendship group, I don't think... There was probably like seven or eight Dockers fans and I was the only Eagles fan. Really? Uh, yeah, no joke. I can't think well, of who was the Well, Dill's a Geelong, Geelong Ge- fan. Yeah, okay. yeah. but yeah. Darcy, Fremantle, yeah. Snowy, Fremantle, yeah. Sib, Fremantle. Yeah, yeah. that's... I've been loving that shit on all seven of them. I want a flag. <laughs> actually, yeah. No, they're all pretty good about it. We do actually have a pretty good friendship group yeah. in terms of that. What yeah. do you like? Do you yeah. have your... You're more like maybe... Um, not confrontational but for, for us for instance we don't actually don't give each other shit yeah. unless there's a derby sometimes the group chat's fiery when there's a yeah. fucking derby on like yeah. you just can't help that that's yeah. what it's going to be like but when we won the flag you guys didn't give me uh, like you guys didn't talk shit or anything yeah. not that you can when it's like, flag, <laughs> frankly, yeah, but, uh, you guys want a flag eat a dick fuck you <laughs> no but there, there was a sense of you guys were happy for me um so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was definitely happy for like my cousin, that's her name. Oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah, I was happy for them, but at the same time, it disgusted me. It was <laughs> too good of a game for me to stay mad. That yeah, 2018 game was oh. that good of a game. Like, even though I was pissed off because I had money both sides and I ended up cashing them out at the wrong time and <laughs> yeah. neither of my bets oh, fucking won. Worst day ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I got doubly fucked because yeah. when Collingwood were up like three, four goals early in that fourth, I was like, yeah, I'll cash out the Eagles, get a bit of extra cash on that bet, and then ride this Collingwood one home and then. Mm. Fucking Dom Shade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would. 
day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, and Luke Shuey. I know you love Luke Shuey. I know, but this is a weird one. Why? How many people hate Luke Shuey? I used to intangibly hate him, but then the gaff <laughs> shit happened, and then he was the only one that actually... <laughs> he looked real good. <laughs> actually, he was the only one that owned it out of the whole Eagles organisation. He's the only one that went, yeah, Gaffy fucked up. The rest of them were like, yeah, Gaffy's a good dude. It's not that bad. They were trying to deflect. Shuey's the only one that actually owned it. Shui and from and that point, I liked him. Yeah, Shuey embodies what it is to be an Eagles player, I think. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean it in a good way. <laughs> yeah, see, in... In your way, it's perfect, but in yeah. the opposite. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Like, mm. he's got, the, like, the, the swagger, the arrogance, the it's skin, funny yeah. it up, like, the yeah. Norm Smith, the flag. Yeah. Like, just looking at him, and, like, he's just... Mm. Honestly, like, he does have that look. He just like yeah. it's not him. It just he looks like one of those. Yeah, like, um, it's not even Ryan his Crowley sort of yeah. look. About yeah. Yeah. Him. Really? Yeah, I don't see it, and I know I'm biased, but I, I honestly nice. reckon if I had to guess who the best bloke at the Eagles would be, I'd put Shuey up. Really? That's why he's captain. Yeah, and he's a really good speaker, and uh, I sounds like I want to suck his dick. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you would, like, yeah, obviously. Because <laughs> even after that gut stuff, I'd listen to him a bit more, going, "Oh no, no, fucking Shuey!" Yeah, like just yeah. that built in, but actually gave him a bit more of a listening. Yeah, yeah, he built on that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I probably should have asked this first. Where does the free metal love come from? Is it a family thing? Oh uh, yeah, mum. So, yeah, yeah. So she was an Eagles fan originally. Oh uh, yeah. She went travelling in the UK, and her dad was sending her like. All then she fell and had a brain injury and switched. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she must have all that piss. <laughs> um, life would have been so much easier if I was just an Eagles fan. True. But it hasn't worked out that way. But um, yeah, yeah her dad started sending her all this like free merch over. Mm. Um. And she's like, I don't want it. I'm an Eagles fan. And she come back, and the Dockers are just getting slapped every week. So really? just out of pity, went for the Dockers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and ever since then, we've still been a pity side. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. But we had some good years, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you definitely did. Like, Fremantle, because it's a two team town, Fremantle kind of almost have, like, like I said before, they're kind of a meme, but comparatively against the league, like, they're still a pretty good performing club on and off the field. Yeah, we're definitely yeah. in that, uh, that North Melbourne. Uh, yeah. Cold. Yeah. Financially, you're a lot better off. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. That being said, North Melbourne's not actually a bad club when you yeah. think about it. They, they were a team in the 90s. They're just indifferent. I, that's how I'd describe... Yeah. Forgettable. Norfolk. Yeah, forgettable. <laughs> I didn't like... Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Kind of. Well, yeah, we have a big fan base now. It's not like we're mm. like, a, like a Gold Coast anymore. Mm. Like, we're established, which is... 100%. Which yeah. Is good, but... Yeah, yeah. Some success and, would be nice And the Freo They're relying on the Freo legacy Like East Fremantle South Fremantle Waffle clubs Those two waffle clubs Have a lot of history That sort of People mm. have invested in To Fremantle As the AFL Yeah that's true equivalent. There is there is yeah. a degree of history there Versus yeah. you know An expansion club That's very true Yeah, yeah. Um, You got a job at Peel I do To have take a, a massive Peel. pivot <laughs> <laughs> that, um, Was that pretty recent? Um, so I did like a trial in December, mm-hmm. and got the, got the call up in, in January, February. As a player. Uh, yeah, I wish. <laughs> um, but yeah, got a job as a sports trainer there. Mm. Not, it's more work experience than anything, but cool. it's, it's good work experience. Yep. It's sick. How many ex-AFL players schlongs have you seen? You say? <laughs> <laughs> and then how many after you got the job? <laughs> 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 that's class from you. Yeah. Um, no, that's cool though. Have you? So, what's that been experience? Experience been like? Yeah, it's pretty sick. Um, being surrounded by elite <laughs> dogs. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I would <just> leave. <laughs> no, this is great. Um, yeah, like Hayden Valentine's down there every training session. So yeah. that's cool. Um, ben that's Howell, cool. Ben Howell, who played for Essendon. Mm-hmm. Um, what's um, like Merritt, who plays for Essendon. Jackson. Yeah. Jackson oh, Merritt. he went to East Perth, right? And then is he at Peel now? I'm, I'm not sure, sure he went to East Perth. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah he's there. Um, oh, yeah, but I think that's it for like ex-AFL is players. Is Bella's like, playing or is he just getting around the club? Um, He played in the like the scratchies at the yeah. start of the year, but since Corona they haven't played. So, but he's there like yeah. every, every training session. It's, mm. like, it's cool to be surrounded by people like that. Like, yeah. Um, and like it's so professional as well. So I'm, I just like strolled in like, do a rub down or two, strap an ankle, like run water. And then they eventually gave you a job. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like like the physio that is like elite. Like mm. you can just see her brain ticking and like see how smart, <laughs> like how elite she is at her job. And it's just like, I want to, that's where I want to be. If I go down like the health really? sector, like if I follow mm. uni, like that's how I want to be. It's it's sick to see the standards like okay. falling down there. That's cool. How far are you from there? Because you're uh, like twenty minutes. Yeah, it's alright then. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's Sweet. good. It's the closest waffle club. Yeah, by far. Yeah. Just, yeah. A Just a smidge. Yeah. Yeah. What would even be the next one? South Rio. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. In this area. It's good because I was always checking up on like the um, 
the Bill scores to see how the Freo boys are going. Mm. Now they're, true, true. Like yeah. one training session, like Peter Bell coming. I was like, holy shit! And That's like, cool. Michael Johnson yeah. was down there some nights. Roger Hayden and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, nah, it's it's good to be surrounded by them to realize that they're real people and not like <laughs> robots that you can just like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, I know. What you, well, I don't know. What you mean, <laughs> just well, nah. Do you see much of that relationship between Peel and Freo? Like from what you've seen so far, um, is there like a strong like? Like, um, co productive relationships, sort of thing, yeah. yeah. Well, like, when like Josh and Long Mule come down to a scratch match and stuff like that, like, they, there's definitely a good connection there. Like, um, one scratch match that I did, Luke Valente, Tom North, Jace Carter, Jarvis Pina, um, they were all there and they all get yeah. around the Peel Boys, yeah, because so mm. Jarvis was drafted out of Peel, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, but like, yeah, Tom North is a nice lad, he's probably yeah. my favorite out of the bunch. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's cool, yeah. yeah. Are you a real Aaron Norton man? <laughs> <laughs> we need to stop talking about Aaron Norton. Yeah, I know. I've thrown you under the bus there. <laughs> Aaron Norton is a shit bloke. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at that haircut. But man. he is talked like as a god at that club, eh? Like, really? At, at Peel. Yeah, I suppose he's probably the highest draft pick to come out of there now. Yeah, think about probably. It. Yeah. And yeah, like, yeah, good draft pick. He got dropped in that grand final when... um. I think it was 2016. Yeah. And like Connor Blakely's come in, like mm. three players that played a couple games for Peel come in just to play the grand final. And yeah, I think Norton yeah, got stiff. dropped and yeah. there was a bit, bit of um, yeah controversy about that. But yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I vaguely remember that actually. Yeah. Uh, against, was it? Might have been Subi? Against Subi, Subi yeah. 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 Powerhouse. But yeah, was that one of the ones they won? Because I remember seeing yeah. Griffin yeah, and Clark at the casino after one of those Peel flags. <laughs> they looked pretty excited. I think yeah. they won two, haven't they? Yeah. Two in a row? Something like that. Uh, yeah. I think Peel won 2016 and 2018. Okay. Yeah. Something Maybe. like that. Yeah. Uh, and Subi's won the rest. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think Subi won 18 because they played it at Optus, yeah. I think. Yeah, maybe. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Um, 16, 17 it might have been yeah, Back to back possibly yeah. yeah probably probably. Waffle talk Oh yeah because it was just <laughs> after We'd gone to waffle. shit in the AFL Was when the Peel won the couple of flags yeah. Everyone was like Yeah close as free I'll get yeah. the flag <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah No that must have been pretty cool For their little community down there Peel were like Kind of a joke for ages You know what I mean They were like really? the most the, the youngest waffle club And the mm. only they were, When I was growing up um, Like they were the only side that was worse than Perth because I'm a Perth fan. Oh, and true. Perth is now the joke of the club. <laughs> true. Um, so, no, yeah. East Frio, unfortunately. Oh, I'd true, have to yeah. say we are. You're right. an East Frio fan. Yeah. 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 You know uh, Bristow who used to play there? Name sounds familiar. Big Ginger Rockman. <laughs> no, I don't know the, too many of the players and stuff. Oh. I had a few mates and stuff play down there and stuff. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, I worked with two guys at East Frio, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, Good times. Oh, well, yeah. Bristow was my sports teacher and he played league for East Frio. That's nice, cool. but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the Peel were in a bit of strife for a long time. Hey, yeah, because um, the alignment seemed to be perfect for yeah, them in terms yeah. of yeah. Well, Shannon Hearn was playing down there. I think that's something that was um, he. Yeah, when when he first got drafted, oh, he was right. playing for Peel. So they were like, well, we can't be having an Eagles player with like playing with like the Dockers players. Wow, well, yeah, so okay. that's why they had to do the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, right. the Eagles wanted because they both clubs wanted all their players together so they'd actually yeah. be able to practice their structures and stuff rather than because mm. it used to be like one or two guys from East, one or two guys that go yeah. to South, one or two would go to Perth, mm. yeah. wherever you what, whatever waffle club recruited you basically. If you're an AFL guy that couldn't get a game, there was, and then yeah, there was like a Victorian. The, the Victorian players would go into a little draft as well. Uh, yeah. Um, that's or like non non West Australian. Yeah, because all the West draft. Australian guys would just go to their alignment club. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, hmm, different days. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, getting back to YouTube, um, I want to ask, what what sort of stuff do you think? And this is a massive pivot. I should have asked this question earlier. Um, what do you think? Like, while you're still doing the AFL thing, what what do you want to see from like the future of? This this industry of the AFL industry, industry. yeah, just like even just like amongst the boys, yeah, like the YouTube community is that what you're sort of alluding yeah, to? that's yeah. what I'm really yeah. thank you for rescuing me there. You're um, welcome. I'm sure it's in the pipeline, and we, we spoke about it. I think mm. like a, a YouTuber group would be sick mm. if we could figure out a formula to make that work mm. and have numbers behind it, like the side man. Obviously, it's someone to be as big as the side man, yeah, like a little AFL YouTuber side man. That'd be sick. That would be cool. I think making like a copper 90 for AFL YouTube would be sick as well. And I think we could easily do that if everyone was committed enough yeah. to it. This, like YouTube's not going to last forever. If we can make True. like a niche little digital media AFL company, I reckon that'd take off. You are ambitious, aren't you? I yeah. love that. No, it's good. That's really cool. It's cool that you thought about it as well, for sure. Yeah. What do you reckon is the ceiling for this niche? 
because uh, well, having it, subs is Kane and McDonald have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in theory, the AFL one has, what, 150? So I feel like yeah. that could be the ceiling. Maybe. Yeah. yeah you're probably right. Mm. About, yeah, 200K. And that's exploding. Like, Caden, Caden doubled last year almost, I think. Mm. Didn't he go from, like, in the mid-20s yeah. to, like, 44 yeah. years now? So Yeah. I'm not sure if it was you who I was talking to. It might have been the pair. I can't remember who it was. But mm. as the generations are progressing, I think more people are going to flood into YouTube. Content. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So the, the, the market will keep on growing, I think. Yeah. I hope so, anyway, unless it all just goes to TikTok and we all just <laughs> oh, come around. God, it. that's my worst fear because I'm like, I have no adaption to TikTok at all. Get I, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have it in me. <laughs> no, you got to just get rid of your dignity. <laughs> in the I have, I have an true, AFL though. Evo video that got 400 views. I'll put a clip of it on TikTok. It's nearly on 100,000 views. What? Yeah. That's ludicrous. It's money. And you get That's Insta sick. followers from it. You just bring them over to YouTube. Oh, you don't man. have to become a TikToker. Yeah, I just don't know if I have it in me, but <laughs> fuck, you're making a compelling point. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jamo and Dylan, um, yeah. whose podcast I was on, great yeah. lads, they um were doing decent, steady numbers, like 400, 500 views a pod. Yeah. Got on TikTok, and now they're getting like 2,000 views really? a pod. I noticed they're doing very well. I didn't, but you reckon TikTok, TikTok numbers are huge. Like, really? they post clips. And that's what um, Austin and Caden are going to do now as well. They've got like a TikTok for the No Man on the Cleats. And mm. then, like, if you could put podcast clips of your yeah. podcast <laughs> on TikTok, you're not even. You're not going, clips of me going like this. <laughs> How long can they go? <laughs> How long can they go for? Um, Like, up to a minute. Yeah, but like Insta, the, yeah. It's like however long they get viewed for. So you've got to make them entertaining. The more they get viewed, oh, they, get, they get on the, like, the For You page and that's how they get... Cool. It's not, you don't have to be doing these ones. And, like, <laughs> not the cringy dancing <laughs> yeah, shit. No, yeah. it's, it's upload the clips of the pod on there. It's yeah. Not, there is a bunch of 12-year-olds that do do the dances on there, but it's, yeah. there's content there. Well, you know all about those. Oh, man. Oh, go on. That's not the side I go to, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I've dropped out my masters, I'm allowed to make such jokes again. Yeah, true. <laughs> now that you're not pursuing a career in teaching. <laughs> Come here, kiddies. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, sweet. Well, the AFL actually had this guy. I don't know if the boys talked to you about it, but this guy who actually worked at Copper 90. Yeah. Um, I won't go. Anthony. I won't dox him, so. Uh, <laughs> but <yeah>. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> the um, no. So his his role was literally to um, connect to like the YouTube and like digital media community mm-hmm. um, with the AFL, and I like so I, that at least speaks to the idea that they want to build that, and that's yeah. obviously they use Coco and Caden for heaps of their kids stuff. Particularly, yeah, particularly was directed at a very young audience. So it does show that the AFL is trying to build this sort of thing. And they contacted me as well, and I did a clip for them. Um, I'm clearly no Caden or Cuckoo because I only did like one or two, but, uh, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, but no, that like that would be cool if in the future they um, made sort of a concerted effort to sort of include us. That would be that because the Copa guy moved on from the AFL. Yeah, it yeah. was like a temporary yeah. role. I think he had. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that's the way to go. Like. That just makes a whole new market. Like, yeah. it's just waiting there to be taken. Mm. I think the AFL isn't too um, up to the times in terms of digital mm. media and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think Caden... Well, I don't want to dox Caden and throw him under the bus, but I'm sure he would have a couple ideas that the AFL could could use yeah. and um, would definitely value there to be had. It's not like we're, yeah. we don't know what we're doing sort of thing. It's crazy to think that, like, five years ago it was very hard to get highlights of a football game. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, but it wasn't that long ago that like, because I I used to live overseas and there was a time where uh, I lived up until 2013 and I used to have to, um, before AFL Live passed, it was just 6PR online. That was how I watched games. So like, it's crazy to think how far we've come since then. And then like, if I remember having to like, dig and dig to try and find highlights of an Eagles game, like after I'd watched, uh, I would listen to it. So, um, at least, you know, they're becoming more aware of that and, like, yeah, hopefully that bodes well. Where did you live? Think. Abu Dhabi. What was that like? It's near Dubai. It was really good, yeah. My dad got a job there um, when I was 14 and moving over was really tough. But, yeah, um, yeah kind of got obsessed with the Eagles while I was away, yeah, right. which is kind of a weird dynamic. Um, but, yeah, no, it was pretty sick. There's not really any sport to follow locally in Abu Dhabi, is there? No, I, camel racing. I did train <laughs> with the Abu Dhabi Falcons one. <laughs> that was a national football team with, like, expats and stuff yeah. like that. Um, what, football? AFL, yeah. What? Yeah, there's, like, a Middle Eastern league, but there was, like, one team per city. So you had one in Abu Dhabi, one in Dubai, one in Oman, and True. then you would literally fly. It was all amateur, obviously. Yeah. But, um, I never played. I was too young. I was, like, 
19 when I left. Um, but that's yeah, sick. there was a little bit of a presence there. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, pretty random. Yeah. I haven't actually talked about that that much on this. You should. Uh, yeah. I think that'd be yeah. a good, good thing. <laughs> Maybe a second channel thing. Yeah. 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 Um, so, obviously, like, massive segue. 2020 season mm -hmm. has been fucked with by COVID. Mm -hmm. How did you cope as both a fan and a creator, I guess, with the big gap? Did you find that tough? Because you're like someone who's just started to build momentum mm -hmm. with your channel. Yeah. How did you find that break? Was that frustrating for you? Oh, yeah. I think it was frustrating for everyone. Yeah. Um, but the time I had off, I loved. Like, I loved yeah. being at home. My brother was home. Like, yeah. we just chilled and, I don't know, like, got to know each other better. Oh, got really? Got to know ourselves better. <laughs> like, it was just a good time of, like... You know when you're like, oh, I just wish I had time to get shit done. It's like, mm. time to get shit done. True. It was a perfect time. But in terms of content creation, um, I've never pumped out more videos in that time. That was my best True. month, like April. Um, so I'm sure it probably would have done better if I had of, um, if COVID hadn't have happened. But mm. like, I still coped all right. I, obviously, it's a terrible tragedy in COVID. But <laughs> I, in my personal that was life, fine, bro. <laughs> killed a couple bloody million people. But, um, yeah. Nah, it was good. No, nah, that's good. Yeah, no, I just wondered because, yeah, like I found that, um, and this is very woe is me, but like I just meant from a purely YouTube perspective, yeah. that was, it was quite rough and I found yeah. that I worked fucking hard during that gap and then now football's back, I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I just can't be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I started Do vlogging during that time and I enjoyed vlogging during that time. Yeah, okay. I'm going to stick with that. But I've, yeah, that's cool. You, you do a weekly vlog now. Yeah, yeah. Most, most weeks. Yeah. I didn't catch you on that as well. Oh, yeah, like, true, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I, I found it okay. I'm sure if I was on a larger scale, like you or Caden, like, I don't know what hit Caden hard and mm. Cookson probably as well, but mm. yeah, and, and the pair as well. Yeah. That's all the boys. You've got to name like, all of them now. <laughs> yeah. Backy Charles. Card and man. Yeah, card yeah. man. Fucking Mitch Ryan, the boys. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't think I was on a big enough scale to be affected too much by views because it, at that point, if I was getting a thousand views a video, I was stoked. So mm. just getting like a, like 400, 500 views video, I was chilling. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a good attitude to have. What about as a football fan, as someone who missed Freo? What, what have you made of Fremantle? We kind of talked about it before, but what have you made of Fremantle since they, uh, you know, resumed the season? What do, you, what do you reckon? Did you have high expectations? I was very low expectations. Yeah, even before Corona, and everything I reckoned with our memberships, give it a year. That was the the plan. So we didn't get them this year. So it was sort of like True. see how we go this year. True. Because our we were in the Premiership Terrace, ironically named Premiership <laughs> Terrace. I'll add, and that was a shitload. So it was just like we'll give it a year, see if there's some good progression. Like I'm still still optimistic, but. I didn't want to commit too hard this year. I genuinely thought we could push eight, like the top mm. eight. Yeah, yeah. Maybe mm. that's me being way too optimistic and having no idea what we're talk that I'm talking about. But last year we beat DWS, Collingwood, Geelong, Bulldogs. Mm. Like, like, what's that? For? Freo's good for like, Freo's good for a few of them a year though. We'll just pull like yeah. those sort of wins yeah. out of our ass a few times a year. Like some team. Like, great performance was. against Carlton. <laughs> no, just, like I can talk we just fucking lost the goal game yeah. <laughs> but like yeah I, I genuinely think the quality was there mm. until we lost it um, Ed Langdon and Brad Hill and that yeah. just ripped out yeah. like a yeah. lot of that our, hurt. our style Ed Langdon was so good for us last year yeah he could have been tidier but he was getting there he was only young his skills yeah. were getting there Like he was getting style. the ball he just needed to tidy a little more but then Connor Blakely had to fuck everything up, literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I won't go through to the keeper, yeah. but you can make your own deductions. Yeah. <laughs> were you um Were you a Ross Lyon fan? Uh no. So come twenty, our first season that we started being crap. Mm. So what was it? Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah. I think he signed a new contract in 2016. Yeah, he signed of that four years right as we started turning the shit. Yeah, and I was like, nah, like, I, because that's when we started playing boring. Like, even 2015, yeah. we finished minor premiers, but we weren't the best team in the comp that yeah. year. Yeah. Like, weren't a high scoring team, not hugely exciting to watch. Like, 2013, like, we always had that, like, trademark forward pressure and whatnot. Yeah. Like, we were exciting to watch. Mm. 2015 wasn't as exciting. 2016 started doing shit. I was like, oh. oh 2016 was a weird year for you guys. I didn't was. think we were going to be shit in 16, but we were. No, I thought, well, I thought no we had did. another year or two in us. Yeah, you had yeah. no real reason to get dropped down. Yeah. Because I, I remember looking at this thinking, well, how did Fremantle fall so far? And the teams that you played in rounds one to four were 
best 22 from the year before as well, yeah. like experienced players. And I'm, now as I'm saying this, I'm very aware the Eagles are yeah, doing exactly that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, but it's true. Like, that was that was a weird drop-off for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's when shit started hitting the fan with, like, the, the players, like, not getting along and yeah, okay. whatnot. Um, yeah. Fife sort of started, you know. The- Wanting more <laughs> to it, sort of, to an extent. Like, he wanted to be the guy. He wanted yeah. to lead the team. He wanted to be... And as like a pulled off field, Luke McFarlane sort of play, you'd be like, oh, fuck off. Like, yeah. I've seen you come from looking like a stick to, yeah. like, who are you <laughs> to say that? And he's the best player that we've ever had, yeah. arguably. So, yeah. it's fair enough. But, yeah. I don't know why we did hit the fan, but it bloody hurt yeah. we did. Yeah. Would you, uh, that's been like a real bummer to say the least because I feel like that's cost you so many players. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. the, the rebuild. And I think that's kind of the way the game's going. I've made this point before, but maybe you don't lose... Maybe you do lose, you lose hockey with it. Weller either way. Brad Hill, Lockie Neal, um, Ed Langdon. That's like four yeah. best 22 players in their prime right now. Four top-end best 22. Yeah. Like, we would have been in the top half of our best 22, those guys. Yeah. and well, yeah, Lockie okay. Neal was our second best player. Yeah. Five. Imagine if we had a midfielder from that five, Lockie Neal and Brad Hill right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those two would help so much. Ed Langdon on the wing, Lockie Weller on the other. Like, yeah. Man, that's elite. Yeah. Mind you, you didn't... Wasn't that your midfield in 2016 and 17? No, we didn't have Brad at that stage. I don't didn't think. you? Oh, wait, no, we did. 18, we had Lockie Neal yeah. and Brad Hill, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. you would have. We were still, shit, though. Ross yeah. Lyons' fault. Uh, yeah. But, but it does hurt, definitely. Uh, when we weren't getting results with the with the list that we had, I knew, like, no. Nah, because I knew mm. we were better than the teams that we were losing to. Yeah. And when that's happening, like, everyone... That's very true. Everyone writes do- the Dockers off, like, sort of like, oh, the Dockers didn't play well today. But it's like, we should have. Like, mm. uh, mm. we had the list to do it for... Like the, that 2018 period, and we did it. And yeah, I'm happy yeah. that Ross Lane's gone for sure. Yeah, I, I'll, especially as a development coach, he's not the best. Like, because he's a coach, his system play your role, not learn your skills, improve mm. as a player. And yeah, that was something he was criticized for at St Kilda, not mm. being a coach who could really develop youth. Yeah, and then Jose I mean, it was a bit early type. for hey, Jose Mourinho type man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like a real top up. Um, yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, I, I guess as we sort of meander towards the end of the pod, um, what I'll get you actually to I'll put you on the spot. Go on. Who do you think are the top contenders this year based on what you've seen in four weeks where pretty much every contender has dropped yeah, points? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I think in the my preseason predictions, I put GWS to win the flag. Yeah. They've sort of... Oh, they beat Collingwood the other day, though. Yeah, so. yeah. And they beat Geelong fairly comfortably. They're as good a shout as anyone at this point, I'd say. Yeah. Them or Collingwood, really. Yeah. I'll a port the real deal? <laughs> nah. Now nah, they do this every year, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just say Gold Coast. I'll be happy for An- <laughs> yeah. I'll be happy for Anthony if they make finals, but I still think that's iffy. Wait, do, do you rate Gold Coast finals? Oh, based on what you've seen, they're, they're a good good yeah. side. Yeah, like, they're really linking up well together, playing as a whole unit. There's not mm. just the Matty Rowell. It's like yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a side. freak. Hey, he's three. He's three days younger than me. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's scary. What's heinous? I saw something interesting. Fiorini can't get a game for him. Yeah, he put up really good numbers last year. I, I reckon Freo should have a crack at him. Yeah, Surely. he's all right. He's uh, he's a good fantasy player. Gets a lot of the ball. I think it's his impact that's yeah. reduced. So still, you know, Freo could use a guy like that that flicks it two guys were more impactful. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. He's you could make that argument for Lockie Neal when he was playing with us. People yeah. made that argument. Mm. Yeah, that uh, Titch type player. Who do you reckon for the flag? I'll, I, I'll go to GWS. I was thinking GWS Collingwood, and I'll tip Collingwood a win. That's where I've been for like the last mm. while. Yeah. Uh, I, did, I did say Richmond preseason. Did I say Richmond? Probably. I think I said Richmond at least in the grand final, and I still think they'll come back strong, mm. but they might be leaving it a little bit late, uh, especially with a seventeen game season. Yeah, yeah. Who, who knows? Do you reckon? I'd probably go the Pies because I assume they'll wrangle away for the game to still beat the MCG. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah, imagine having it fucking. Optus or, stadium. What's yeah. it called now? Uh, Smart Stadium. Or something. Is it Smart Stadium? Something like that. What, Giant though? Stadium. Yeah. It's called Giant Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> Smart Stadium. <laughs> They've had all sorts of. Sco- they had like Skoda or something yeah. on some stage. Yeah, uh, no, that's right. Boss. Nah, cool. All right, well, uh, we've probably come to sort of a, a natural end of the pod, Druzy. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I guess before we go, why don't you give yourself a little plug, tell everyone where they can find you on uh, various platforms. Uh, so, yeah, Druzy on YouTube, um, underscore Druzy on Instagram, and underscore mm. Druzy with two Zs on Twitter. 
Um, I like Twitter. It's my favorite social media. Not that I post much on there, but I think really, yeah, I think that's my favorite. I'm not a Twitter man at all. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. But um, yeah, if you want to see someone talking absolute shite about AFL, not knowing what they're talking about, and just have a laugh, I might be might be for you. Yeah, well, if you like, what about that TikTok podcast? you're alluding to before? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. the TikTok. Can't forget the TikTok. Yeah. Underscore Drewzy on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. it. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks so yeah. much for coming on. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>